jig. That thing's pretty heavy. Welcome back to, or welcome back. Welcome to episode two of Tim's Trailer Build. We got it in place. We got all that junk. Actually, I ended up moving the junk anyways. I was thinking just to move the trailer, but I just moved the stuff too. Cleaned it up over there. It looks better. Now we can see what we got to deal with. There's a trailer. That's a heavy trailer. The front of that is probably... I'd say at least 600 pounds tongue weight because this tractor only lifts about 700. So I don't know, it might be 500 tongue weight. But anyways, thanks for tuning back into the show. This is going to be fun. We're going to get a few things ready. I'll show you what we got to deal with. All right. I figured out how to turn you guys on with my phone. <laughs> Just kidding. This is a family show. Keep it clean. You can control the camera with my phone. Anyways, I got that rack thing. Check it out. Let me knock all this out. Let's see if we can get this thing over here. I'm afraid, unfortunately, if I leave the camera on, you guys stand more of a chance to see me do something dumb because I'm the king of cutting corners. You can ask any one of my friends. Oh, and I know what you're thinking. Is your knee? Why is your knee sore? It is. Look at it. Friggin' killing me. But uh, man, I still go. I gotta work tomorrow too. April 3rd's the day getting my knee worked on. So, anyways, check this thing out. I mean, it was close. It was a valiant effort. Not quite big enough. But we could extend it. I wonder what's on the bottom of this thing. Aha. Uh -huh. Just an X pattern. So... I don't know, let me think about that. Because to extend that, because it has the X, we'd have to just, we'd have to go bigger. So we might just be using parts of this thing. That front's pretty pretty, that'd be a nice front. I like these nice gussets right here. Those are cool. I don't have time to do detail like that. But here I found some mesh. 
ramp, or you know what we might do. Let me show you. Might use that piece of mesh right there to put in here. So if I just weld a couple of angles in there, I figure I better get this done in here before I get that rack up here. Because then it's just going to be twice as hard to work in there. So I need to just weld a couple angles in on this side. One angle here, an angle down there, angle there, angle. And then cut that piece and drop it right in. We'll probably put a cross, cross angle in there. And that'll uh, be good. That'll hold all my junk. Um, what would be nice is to seal it right up to here. That way nobody can get in there. So, Well, the reason I made this winch like this... So, and I have a smaller winch too, like a little ATV winch, 3,500. This one's, this is a pretty big boy winch here. 12,000 pound. This is your uh, Badlands Harbor Freight Special. I rigged up this deal. I wanted to cut these off and put some handles here. Or just put handles on it while I cut it off. Um, but the reason I rigged this up is so if I have to leave this trailer abandoned somewhere... You know, waiting or just sitting, I don't have to worry about somebody stealing a $300 winch out of there. So that's why I put it on that little hitch thingy right there. And that's, I got a remote. But, all right, well, let's grab some more steel and see what we got. All right, well, hopefully I got that, that microphone deal fixed. Because before when I talked this way, it was louder. Is it still all muffled now? I took that other mod thing off. I got one other GoPro I could use if it keeps doing that where it's got a back mic. I'll see if I can get myself a little mic if this is gonna continue on. Anyways, I noticed we got, I noticed we got a few uh, extra subscribers. Thank you guys for uh, showing up to the trailer build. I know we're not out by the trailer right now, but that ain't always gonna happen, so. But I got, if you're new to the channel, welcome. My name's Tim, and this is my trailer build. This is episode two, and I'm sure at episode like five, I'll forget where we're at. But I got this plasma cutter, and I, I got this from my dad. My dad, unfortunately, uh, passed away last year, so. That being said, I got this plasma cutter. I'm pretty sure it, I mean, it worked last time. Last time, and I have used them before. I just don't know if this thing works fully. So if anybody knows anything about these plasma cutters, I'd love to have this to be able to do some of this uh, PSB 31. Probably when I tip you over, you flip over because my camera's... Oh yeah, it's sponsored by Milwaukee too. There you go, Power Arc 19, or 190-205. So, I don't know nothing about it. I, we had it hooked up once, my dad did, and then now I got it. But I'd love to use it. It's got the air hook up here. Made in... EEC. I don't know where that is. 25 turbo. So hey, if you're a welder or you know anything about that, let me know. All right, here's the little welder we're going to use. SP-135. It's always worked for me. I think I have uh, 025 in there. Or no, I got 030. 030, right there. So, got a big spool. That should get her done. We're not going to have that many weld beads, I hope. Hopefully I left this bottle off last time I used it. Yep, we're good. So there's the welder. If you got any pointers or tips, I know. Keep the tip clean. Keep the hose straight. I got it. Let's see how big that is. Alright, we'll say... What's that say? Nine feet? Nine foot. Oh, that was my knee. 
nine foot to the center that one's to the center back there i ain't daring stepping in here my son will kill me so we're gonna say nine feet from hub to hub all right, all right let's get this one center of the hub here that's about center and this one this is the the four door and the four door measures in we're gonna go with you can see the hub there so 11 feet that would mean that this one's only two foot longer which makes a big difference in the whoops that's right so the four seater is two foot longer than the two seater two seater is nine it nine feet and the four seater is 11 feet so there you go now let's go lay it out on the trailer oh my god this mud is insane look at my shoes look what i just did with the wall god. My wife's gonna kill me. Look, we're already, we ain't even started working on the project. We're already ruining things. My God. Just, just uh, for you know what's and giggles, it's a family show. Gotta keep it family friendly, guys. So for you know what's and giggles, let's measure how far the wheelbase is on this guy. All right, there it is, there's the hub. We'll go there. I always go a little further. I mean, if you need to measure exact, that's one thing, but you don't need to measure exact. You just gotta make sure you got enough so it ain't rubbing on the tire. Every time I make something, it's rubbing on the tire and that'll kill it. But look at that. Center of the hub, right there. Dude, the Can-Am is longer than this thing. Wow. Too bad I can't put this in the trailer wait a second did that just say 10 inches or 10 feet that would mean the can-am's a foot longer than the jeep what the that's freaking crazy i gotta go back and watch the video see that that's new to me because i had a gopro hero 3 until a year ago when i started this youtube channel now I got a 10 and a 12, and I still barely use that. But that is cool, I wish I could watch the video. I think it's only the seven. The GoPro seven does that. All right, let's lay this out. I can't do it one-handed, so I gotta put you guys on the perch. All right, let's put that four-seater back here. So what do we need, 11, or, uh, 11 feet? Alright, 11 feet gets you to the center of the tire. So we don't want that to hang off the back. So let's put that right there. That way that tire's on the back. That's 11 feet. That puts this right here. So let's move this so we can remember. Okay. Now we know how far... And that goes right to the center of the tire. Holy moly. That friggin' Can-Am's long, dude. Wow. Jeez. Okay. That's something else. Let's, uh... Now that... That little two-seater... Well, look there. See that? That's why I put that there. That two-seater... Okay, it's going to sit diagonally, obviously. Hook that. So, here's nine feet. You guys see me? I'm over here. Nine feet. Let's check and see if my son's coming. They're always, every time I'm videoing, somebody's up there watching. Now he's not watching. Anyways, nine feet, okay? It's going to go up here. So what I'm thinking is, if I can have this like a flat, so let's see, nine feet, half there. Oh my God. Okay, I'm cutting that part out. Nine feet. 
that's right to here. So that's right at that tongue jack. Right at this tongue jack right here. Is where the nine foot mark is. Man, it's muddy. You guys are in the mud big time over there. What a mess this place is. So, what I was thinking is to put this rack right on top of here, which would be pretty doggone close. Look at that. Um, that's five feet. So, five feet past here. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. That would get us over to here. Well, we don't need it that long. We only need it about... If we went four feet, I think it's three feet from my truck. Let's go check how far the tongue is. All right, so to keep it from jackknifing and ruining my truck, it has to be past ooh, four feet. I mean, three feet would put it right here. That would, that would give that trailer a long ways to go before it hits. But hey, four foot six from that tongue, four foot six would barely hit. I mean, three foot six. Yep, three foot six. We're barely clear here. And that, that rack could be this high. So that's going to be uh, five feet. So if we go above five feet, we should be good. All right. So from here, four feet would get us to there. So if that thing didn't stick past four feet, when my truck comes around into here, it won't hit. Because I want to bring the sides of this trailer all the way out here. Make it a little wider with a drive over fender. We'll just hack those fenders down. So that'll keep it from hitting here. We can come up to here. It's gotta be above five feet. And that puts it right here. We're gonna say nose level. So nose high right there. All right, I don't know if any of you have ever done anything like this or seen a trailer like this. I did see one, but I couldn't get a doggone picture of it. Um, but if I have this come up here, five feet, which would be, um, all right. See, this is a lot of the process when you do this stuff. You gotta think this stuff through. Well, you don't do this with any plans. We're just making this up as we go, and then we gotta try to make it work with what steel we have. So. Here we go, five feet would be here. So then we'd have ramps going from here. Actually, that would be right there. There you go. So it's about three foot, almost four feet off the deck. And that's where the upper, so this thing opens to there. So if this ramp went here, level with that that's not going to be a problem so this will be flat and then we'll have ramps that hook on here and then the ramps will come down right here so as we pull up it goes flat whoop, and we're down real simple and we'll make those ramps different than those ramps because that car is going to be on those and we're going to need those to get the car off even though i don't even use ramps to get off that thing right now i just drive the car right off but that's the plan let's take a look underneath here i haven't even been under here oh axles look good and the springs look good i mean probably just want to check them out you know what we could almost flip those too and then it would give it Look at that. Dude, I could take those axles and put them, flip those U-bolts, flip those axles over and put them underneath the springs. Then this thing would be a lot taller. And the other plus, these fenders would be 
a lot less tall too and we could just take this fender hopefully i'll be able to just take it apart bend it up cut it and reuse that i mean it's not going to be a show trailer but dang that's that's kind of cool that i can flip those over not a bad deal i don't know if that'll mess with the weight rating i wouldn't imagine it would some pretty big trucks with some flip springs so all right and then what we're gonna have to do so we're gonna have to extend this frame right here out to here and then come along here with it i gotta come past here all the way to here so this whole thing's gonna have to be square so we're gonna have to just box this whole thing in all the way to this side and then box in this fender too and these back here i'll just box these in too come off of maybe here maybe come off of here and go up to here and go into here with it and put a little gusset on that and that'll be strong as a son of a gun probably just leave these in there and leave the holes wouldn't hurt but this is some pretty thick steel i think when we do these pieces i got some pretty thick steel let me look oh yeah look at these these are these are some thick pieces of steel i know you're thinking they're all rusty who cares i'm a sandblaster so this is some thick stuff here's some thick angle i got some big pieces here this is another thick one some two two inch so that's good we could do a couple of those with that all right i sure would like to incorporate that that would look nice but here's this other box this stuff's thinner i don't mind making this uh the part that the car sits on that's cool oh look at that oh that's a thin one too so i only got a few thick ones all right but let's try to use some of this. We got three or four of those. That'd be cool. You know what I was thinking? Look at this. I think the Can-Am's only 70, 72 inches in the front. We're going to have to check that out. Because then I don't need to make that rack. It doesn't have to be as wide as the trailer. It could be a little smaller and then your ramps could get you up there. So this rack might work. Maybe want to bring it in a little bit over here. But I wouldn't want to lose any of my trailer space. That's the problem. I want that thing right there. In case I got to put pallets. Because I put my sand on here once a year. Alright, there's the tape. Don't tell my wife I brought you guys in here. <laughs> She's always wanted to do a tour. And she would not want it to be uh, this dirty. Anyways, shh, don't tell her. I'm not going to show you upstairs, and I won't show you that cool sign right there she made either. But I will show you that. Check that out. That's my car. Isn't that a cool shot? My buddy did that. It's Mom and Pop's frame shop in Menifee. So Google it, Mom and Pop's frame shop in Menifee, and he infused... A picture I took on my phone. I took that picture on my phone, man. Crazy. And it even had trucks and stuff in the way. And he photoshopped them out. And left me with that awesome image. Isn't it cool? It's my son and his girlfriend in the car. What a memory. I think that's uh, just before COVID. So that's 2019. Thanksgiving trip, I do believe. Mom and Pop's frame shop in Menifee. So here's the distance. There. I know, I already showed you that. See, I forget a lot of things. So remind me in the comments. Say, hey, Tim, you keep repeating yourself. I'll try to remember. So 74 inches to the width of this thing. And that's, you know, all the way down pretty much. It was tied down and it came loose, so... It might get a little wider when it goes down when those arms go up but for the most part i'd say 74 is a safe bet all right 
there it is. It's pretty much the same on that line, maybe a little bit further over. Let's go all the way to the line. That's probably a little past the front, but his front end's all sucked up with that tie strap right there. So it'll fit in here. So that's as skinny as you can get it with the knobbies. And that's 64. And that is, see the tire there? 64 to here, 67 is almost to the wall and that tire is about that far from the wall over there. So I'm gonna say 65. 65 inches on that one. So 74 and 65. All right, 64 is right here. So his car will fit in between here real easy. Now 71, 72, but that's with my paddles. So, I mean, it should fit. It's gonna be close. I can always extend this out just a little bit. Make like a little rail on there that we could use as a tie down and then it would make it a little wider too. So, but man, you know, one thing I need to do is make a mount so I can put all these different hitches in it and put all the pins in them. Then I could keep them in that box or just pile them in there, I guess. But I always wanted to make a nice mount you could put those things in. Wouldn't that be cool? Got so many of these things. And this ain't even, I probably got more up there. They're to fit every truck because I don't like to switch them around. I guess I need one of those adjustable ones. All right, we're going to have to wrap it up because that's probably way too long. You're probably ready for bed anyway, so I'll let you guys go to bed for the night. That's the end of episode two of Timmy's trailer build. I know we're moving slow, but I'm hoping to get to some stuff, and then this is going to go fast. We're going to run out of stuff to do. So I just did this so I could hang out with you guys. Anyways, signing off right here from the top of the dune in my house. Look at this, we can make it flat on top. Look at all this sand. I have a dunes at my house. This is how wet the sand is in Glamis too. Stuff's horrible. If I hit you in the face with a handful of wet sand, can you imagine that versus a handful of dry sand? So, but hey, I gotta get the tractor put away. Oh my gosh. And I uh, appreciate you guys watching. Make sure you click the like if you liked it. I hope they have the dislike disabled on this video. <laughs> so, but uh, click the subscribe if you're new here and you, you haven't, you're not a subscriber, I consider you a friend of the channel. So click the subscribe and you're friends with us and you can comment, I mean, you're friends with us anyways. So if you got any questions, comment below and, uh, or if you got any, you know, criticisms, things I'm doing dumb, I would love to know because I'm just making this stuff as up as I go and try and take you guys along with me. Having fun with it. Episode two. We'll see you on episode three.